During the First Tiberium War, both the Brotherhood of Nod and the Global Defense Initiative made use of special forces units to carry out covert missions across the globe. These units were simply referred to as Commandos. Commandos could work solo or in a squad. Most were known for using a Raptor 50 caliber assault rifle with suppressor to quickly take out infantry. And they always made sure to carry enough C4 explosives to demolish buildings. I've got a present for you! Some commandos would even wear red berets. Though easily seen, these commandos were confident in their abilities to take on anything the enemy threw at them. That was left-handed! A couple of missions involving these special forces included a single GDI commando that destroyed two SAM sites in order to utilize a helicopter to fly over patrolling Nod forces. This allowed him to infiltrate the nearby Nod base and destroy its airfield. Keep them coming! In an attempt to delay research on the Ion Cannon project, the Brotherhood used a commando, backed up by additional forces, to assassinate Dr. Wong Hu Chan in Angola. Ha 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 ha! At some point during the war, GDI decided to put together a special team of these elite units. Doing so meant faking the deaths of each member, as GDI wanted these operatives for beyond covert operations that would hardly benefit from public exposure. One quote died in a raid on a terrorist bomb making lab in southern Chile. Another fell during a bloody conflict while gathering intel on rival Nigerian warlords. Another was assassinated by thugs in the Balkans. Another died in Turkey, another in Australia, and another in Jordan. This team was the Dead Six. Handpicked after the dissolution of UN peacekeeping forces, they were subsumed under the auspices of GDI, locked in a high-stakes, if not high-profile, war against the Brotherhood of Nod. The Dead Six was comprised of battle-hardened veterans whose skill in the theater of war seemed to compensate for their trouble coping with real life. The first member of this team was Daryl Deadeye McInnes. McInnes was a foul-mouthed Scot who spent many years involved with the Special Air Service before joining GDI. He was a top marksman, with a nearly flawless strike record from 200 meters and beyond. His weapon of choice was the Pierce Sniper Rifle, which had a variable zoom scope and was capable of firing armor-piercing rounds. The rifle was also equipped with a directional microphone, which could pick up conversations at long ranges. Like all commandos, Deadeye carried C4 charges and the standard-issued Falcon Silence pistol as a backup weapon. The second member was Nigel Gunner Grant. Nigel was born in London and spent his formative years toughing it out on the streets and pubs of the city's south side. He joined up with the UK's Special Boat Service, the equivalent of the American Navy SEALs. His time in the SBS led him to join GDI and become part of the Dead Six. Armed with an R-12 Locust Automatic Rocket Launcher, Gunner fulfilled the team's primary anti-tank role. His weapon could be used against both ground and air vehicles, firing six rockets before needing to reload. The third member was Shai Aviv also known as Hotwire due to her expertise with electronics hardware and vehicles. Hotwire was known as a tough-as-nails commando and woman of few words. She grew up in Jerusalem and served with distinction in the Mossad before joining GDI and the Dead Six. Hotwire supported the team as their engineer. Her primary weapon, or tool, was the Gizmo Repair Gun. This gun would fire a blue beam of energy at a friendly vehicle or building repairing any damage that said vehicle or structure had sustained. The gun could also be used to heal allied soldiers and disarm enemy explosives. Hotwire brought a variety of C4 explosives with her on the battlefield. This included the time charges that other commandos used, and the hair trigger charges, which were remotely detonated. She even carried a third type called the Feather C4 Proximity Mine. This explosive device would automatically arm when placed on the ground, and detonate whenever an enemy unit got too close to it. Other than her explosives, Hotwire relied on her Falcon pistol. The fourth member was Eric Patch Wolf. Born in Berlin, Eric Wolf found himself streetwise at an early age. He joined the German paramilitary counter terrorist organization known as the GS9. His reputation within the organization caught the attention of GDI, 
where he became part of the Dead Six as the team's grenadier. His primary weapon of choice was the Kestrel Automatic Grenade Launcher, which launched its shells in an arc from an 8-round detachable box magazine. Wolf was also known to use a Tiberium-based weapon called the Talon Tiberium Flaché Gun. This submachine gun would rapidly launch Tiberium shards at high velocity, quickly killing enemy infantry. However, using the Talon came with the possibility that the target would turn into a Visceroid upon death. The fifth member was Sakura Obata. Sakura was the most mysterious of the bunch, as not much is known about her past. Hailing from Japan, it is rumored that Sakura was formerly a part of the Yakuza. She sought other arenas for her talents, and ended up joining the Dead Six as a mercenary. She would later join the Brotherhood of Nod, due to their ample bank accounts. With the Brotherhood, she operated under the codename Black Widow. We don't know exactly what role Sakura played as part of the Dead Six, but with the Brotherhood, she mostly used the Hawkeye Ramjet Rifle, which was an anti-material weapon designed to fire jet-propelled shells. While with the Dead Six, Sakura had a relationship with the team's best commando, Nick Parker. Nick Seymour Parker was born in Allentown, Pennsylvania. His mother was a homemaker and full-fledged PTA member. His dad was an Allentown steel worker. Parker earned his nickname, Havoc, early on, as he was branded a troubled and problematic child by school counselors and neighbors. All were worried about Havoc's knack for building small explosive devices, which made him popular amongst the town kids for bringing a bang, literally, to the dying burg of Allentown. Parker's youth in Pennsylvania was a gritty collage of fistfights, explosions, after-school detentions, and wry one-liners as a way of coping with it all. Many in the community believed him to be a fool who would one day come to a bad end. They would have been right if the Marine Corps hadn't recruited Parker first. In the USMC, Havoc quickly learned to turn his so-called bad qualities to his advantage. His gruff attitude and penchant for no-nonsense action seemed to work in his favor. Havoc ended up heading a special forces unit during Operation Desert Storm as part of the USMC's recon team. Unfortunately, Havoc's unconventional methods, while effective, often proved to be a public relations nightmare for the Marine Corps. Several times he was threatened with a dishonorable discharge. Because of these issues, the USMC was more than happy to pass him off to the newly formed Global Defense Initiative, where his talents could be put to better use. Havoc joined up with the Dead Six, becoming their leader. Under Captain Parker's leadership, the Dead Six became legendary for their covert operations against the Brotherhood. However, not everything ran as smoothly as both Havoc and GDI would have liked. The drawn-out anti-Nod campaign in Northern Egypt would eventually result in Havoc's dismissal from the Dead Six. Havoc would continue performing operations for GDI, albeit in a solo capacity. While he was no longer a member of the group, Havoc still admired and respected his former squad mates, who felt the same about him. Although the team considered Sakura to be a weak-willed traitor, Havoc was not so sure. He couldn't help but think that one day she would see things his way. Like Sakura, Havoc also seemed to specialize in the ramjet rifle. But really, he was keen on using just about any weapon he could get his hands on, though explosive weapons were his favorite. In the later stages of the First Tiberium War, Havoc would temporarily reunite with the Dead Six. Based on data he had retrieved from a Nod base on a tropical island, GDI was able to pinpoint the location of some of their scientists who had been captured by the Brotherhood. Located somewhere in Europe, the remaining Dead Six team was dispatched to the area to rescue the scientists. The team's helicopter was shot down, crashing in a nearby village, and it was Havoc that came to their rescue. Real tough guy! Keep them coming! Havoc's own helicopter was also shot down over the village, though this did not deter him from rescuing his former teammates. Havoc first rescued Hotwire, who was trapped in a building behind some rubble. They agreed to rendezvous at the town's cathedral. Havoc then fought his way through the city to rescue Gunner, who had taken shelter inside a bunker. He then met up with Deadeye on the second floor of an inn. 
having continued to make his way to the cathedral, helping out resistance forces fighting against Nod along the way. Patch was already at the cathedral waiting for everyone else. Once Havoc arrived, they all defended their position from attacking Nod forces, successfully repelling the assault. Afterward, Havoc ordered his team to hold the cathedral, while he went to rescue the GDI scientists alone. Havoc was partially successful in his rescue mission, as he was only able to bring back Sydney Mobius, the daughter of acclaimed Tiberium expert Ignatio Mobius. Returning to the cathedral, Havoc, Sydney, and the Dead Six immediately exfiltrated the area. The team successfully left the area before a nuclear missile landed right on top of their former position. They fought their way back to the inn, where Hotware took control of Nod's SAM trucks to provide cover for their own helicopter to pick up the team. But Havoc stayed behind to stop Nod's SSM launchers from incinerating the town and its resistance inhabitants. During the battle, the Dead Six continued to help Havoc from their chopper, picking up abandoned Nod light tanks and dropping them nearby for his use. With their assistance, Havoc was able to destroy Nod's SSM launchers and save the town. Havoc had several run-ins with his former squad member, Sakura, throughout his missions to find and rescue the GDI scientists. She continued her work for Nod until Gideon Ravishaw, leader of the Black Hand, decided she was no longer worth keeping around. This was enough to convince her to aid Havoc in his escape from a Brotherhood prison camp. She also contacted him with the location of Sydney Mobius when she was captured yet again and held beneath one of Kane's temples. While Sakura may have left the Brotherhood, she didn't rejoin GDI in the Dead Six, preferring to work as a free agent instead. As to the fate of Havoc and the Dead Six, it appears that the team was disbanded at the end of the First Tiberium War. We don't know what became of Commandos Gunner, Deadeye, Patch, and Hotwire, though I would think that they continued to perform other services within the Global Defense Initiative, or perhaps they retired from the organization assuming any of them are still alive. As for Captain Parker, he would be promoted to the rank of Colonel after the First Tiberium War. In the interim years between the Second and Third Wars, Parker was a big supporter of General Joshua Mitch Mitchell and his Steel Talons Experimental Combat Technology Division. As part of GDI's military funding cuts, the Mammoth Mark II Walker was decommissioned with the last of these walkers being completed at the San Pedro War Factory in 2039. Many were angry about its discontinuation, including Havoc, who at this time was not only a retired war hero, but a popular conservative pundit and proponent of the Kane Lives theory. To quote from the intelligence database, The Mark II was and continues to be one of our most powerful tools in the war against Nod fanaticism. This discontinuation is nothing but another disgusting example of GDI bureaucratic penny-pinching and namby-pamby, can't we all just get along, liberalism. Once again, GDI is playing right into Kane's hands. Being a war hero, a couple of statues were built in Havoc's honor. One was located close to the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia. And the other was located near Dr. Giraud's research lab in Chile. While the Dead Six may no longer be around, their accomplishments, many of which may never be fully known, proved integral in helping the Global Defense Initiative defeat the Brotherhood of Nod during the First Tiberium War. <laughs>